Frank. Any messages? No. Oh, there was a call about midnight. It was a man, but he didn't leave his name. All right, Frank. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Miss David. Thinking about the first time I brought her in to see you. Country kid with stars in her eyes. Patch of straw in her hair. You pitched right in. You made the right connections. You got her started. She owed you a lot. No, Richard. Starting was an eventuality with her. She had everything. That wonderful smile of hers could brighten the darkest corner. I'm trying to put the words on paper for a special column. The title. That's as far as I've gotten. I'll give it time, Mark. It'll come. Not until I find out why Dorothy died. Looks so all here in the paper. It was a suicide. Do you believe that? Look, you knew her. Mark, I haven't seen her for a year. People change. Look, there was no reason for her to take her own life. Someone killed her. Oh, Mark, you really... I was with her a couple of hours before it happened. She was gay, not a care in the world. Maybe she was putting on an act for her. It was real, genuine. You read the evidence the night clerk gave at the coroner's inquest. He said she was morose, disturbed. He lied. Oh, Mark, why would he lie? To cover a murder. Look, you know your way around. Would you mind looking into this for me? I'll pay anything you ask. It's not a question of money where you're concerned. There's just nothing to go on, Mark. I know that suicide was the farthest thing from her mind. It's a guess. Now, more than that, I know how much she wanted to live because we were planning to get married secretly. We were going to fly to Las Vegas. Today. Look, you're just wasting your time. Oh, don't worry about my time, Mr. Campbell. I told the police and the coroner everything. Now, maybe you'll have something out. Are you trying to say that I purposely withheld something? I'm just saying that people forget sometimes, that's all. Well, I left out nothing. 
You told the coroner at the inquest that Dorothy Tabor was morose and disturbed when she returned to you. That's right. What made you say that? Because that's exactly the way she acted. Yeah, sure. Look, I don't have to stand here and listen to your insinuations. Well, it isn't insinuation. It's just simple questions. Well, I don't like the tone of it. One more. Did she have any visitors that night? Simple answer. Same one I gave the coroner. No. Would you call me if you changed your mind? I have nothing to change my mind about. Well, you never can tell you, Martin. If you do, give me a ring. I just here asking some questions. No, not the police. A private investigator named Richard Diamond. Well, I can't help worrying. Look, if this guy starts digging around, he could open this whole can of beans. Then where would I be? Operator, this is EM 12173. I'd like OL 41654, please. Hi, hi, answering service. Uh, it's me, Shannon. Do I have any calls? Mark Larson. He said he'd be working late at the office if you wanted to contact him. Look, I call this Mark Larson. Tell him I'll be in my office in an hour. You got the right office? Richard Diamond? Yeah, that's right. I got the right office. Is something bothering you? People who mind their own business never bother me. You know, just what does that mean? Stop snooping. Well, what's your interest in Dorothy Tabor? My only interest is in leaving well enough alone. You just convinced me that it isn't well enough to leave alone. So I'll change your mind back. Big guy, what? And he worked you over like a prize fighter. And that he did. You think you know who he is? I think so. Who? A man by the name of Harry Bryce. He's an ex heavyweight. Used to fight under the name of Turk Bryce. Used to see him around with Ken Walsh. You ever heard the gambit? I understand he's Walsh's bodyguard. Isn't Walsh a guy that's supposed to back some of the night spots in town? Does. Oh, well, maybe Dorothy worked at one of his clubs? She has, but she wouldn't have anything to do with a man like Walsh. Maybe he made a pass at her. Now, she would have told me. Yeah. You know, what I can't figure out is why Walsh was so interested that he had somebody work me over. Got me. Maybe he had somebody work over the desk clerk. That's why he lied. Yeah, but prove that he lied. Well, maybe I will. I got a friend of mine checking on Mr. Conley right now. What about Walsh? Hmm. I'm going to pay him a visit myself. He's my pigeon. I better get going. I'll see you later. Good. My name's Richard Diamond. Well, welcome, Richard. The same? All right. I'm a private detective. <laughs> I'll find it in my heart to forgive you. 
You know, I've been looking all over town for Ken Walsh. Oh, why come to me? Oh, I heard that you and Ken were like this. Uh-uh. Like this now. What happened? Let's drink, huh? I don't like obituaries. Well, I really came here on business. No, I don't like business either. You know where I can find Walsh? Is he in trouble? Hmm. Could be. Well, now, that kind of business I don't mind. I don't have to protect him anymore. He has a place in the valley most people don't know about. 98 Hart Lane. 98 Hart Lane. Try there. Thank you. The name Dorothy Table mean anything to you? I don't want to talk about her. She's dead. So she's dead. Well, you won't catch me spilling any tears over it. Well, you didn't know her. Oh, didn't I? Evidently, I knew her a lot better than you did. You're defensive about her. Take it from me, she wasn't worth your trouble. Why do you say that? Skip it. Uh, let's don't skip it. Look, there's the door. I'd rather drink alone. I'd rather you finish what you were going to say. You're glad she's dead, is that it? You bet I am. If I could have gotten away with murder, I would have done it myself. But she never hurt anyone. There's no name low enough or dirty enough for what she was. I'm an expert on the subject of Dorothy Tabor. I've got scars to prove it. Only they're not the kind that show. They're down here inside where it hurts. You want to know what she meant to me? All right, now you're going to get your eyes open. Let's just forget it. Are you afraid of the truth? Death doesn't make her any better than she was in life. She was a monster. I can give you a whole string of references. Just ask anyone who worked with her. She wanted everything for herself, and she didn't care how she got it. She wanted Ken Walsh. She got him all right, for me. And when she was finished with him, he ended up on the heap, just like the rest of us. <laughs> what a laugh. A monster hiding behind that sweet little girl's face of hers. She's dead. But the laugh's on all of us because we can never be the same again. She's dead and nothing to repair the damage she left behind. <laughs> Isn't that a laugh for you? Mr. Walsh. There's a law against assault and battery. You will call the police, I'll wait. Why'd you come here? I want to talk about Dorothy Tabor. Don't tell me you don't know her. I know of her. She sang in some of the clubs you backed. So she worked them. But I never mix business with pleasure. Well, I understand you made an exception in her case. Rita Corbett said so. Rita's sore at me. She's not going to say anything. You know how women can be? What about him? What about him? He paid me a visit. He told me to, uh, how do you put it, lay off. Then he roughed me up. That I don't know. He didn't think of it himself. Can't prove it by me. He's supposed to be a smart man, Mr. Walsh. Smart money man. Don't you know the odds are pretty heavy against you? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about Dorothy Tabor's murder. You don't read the papers. The coroner said it was definitely suicide. Well, the coroner doesn't have all the facts. I'm going to see to it that he gets them. That's your business. As I said, Dorothy Tabor was nothing to me. Yeah. I'll see you again. I don't believe that Corbett woman any more than you do. I don't know what I believe anymore. She was lying. 
You knew Dorothy. Yeah, I knew her. Sometimes the people we're closest to, we don't know at all. She's lying. It's all part of a plan to cover up a murder. Well, it could have been that, Richard, couldn't it? Sure, it could. Could also be that she's trying to stick Walsh with the killing. Dorothy is absolutely incapable of one evil thought. How dare that corporate woman try and call her a monster? I could kill her. I'll cool off, will you, Mark? Look, I couldn't save Dorothy's life, but I can protect her name. If you want to drop out right now, all right. I'll go on with this myself. Don't you say anything about dropping out. I just said that the truth might hurt you, that's all. Well, I know the truth. And when the time comes, I'm going to put it down in my column so that everybody can read it. Okay, Mark. Hello. Me, Mr. D. Yes, sir, what is it? Charlie Vincent just phoned in. He finished the checkout on Frank Connolly. Charlie, come up with anything worthwhile? I'd say so. Grab your pencil, Mr. D. Charlie gave me some notes to pass on to you. Go ahead, sir. I couldn't wait for your call, so I thought we'd have our little talk now. I have nothing to talk to you about. Now, I'm going to get some answers this time, or I'm not going to be so nice about it. No, look, I told you everything. Why did you lie to me? I didn't. Let's start all over again. I... Why did you lie about Dorothy Tabor? I told you the truth. Who paid you to make up the story about her being depressed? I don't know what you're talking about. Talking about a recent addition to your bank account, $5,000 you deposited the day after Dorothy died. Now, who gave it to you? You're either going to tell me or tell the police. All right, let's go. No, wait, wait, wait. Ken Walsh gave me the money. Keep quiet about the killing? Well, as far as I know, it was a suicide. Look, he was hanging around the building that night, and he said that... He couldn't afford to be questioned by the police. He was just trying to protect himself, that's all. What about the story he made up about Dorothy being depressed? Well, that was part of the deal I made with Walsh. He told him about my questioning you. I just didn't want to get any deeper, that's all. Well, you're in about as deep as you're going to get, Tim. <laughs> One six five four way. Hi fi answering service. Hello, Samuel, it's me. Hi, Mr. D. For a boy who could use his beauty sleep, you're up awfully late. I'll make it up over the weekend. Look, uh, Sam, did you get any information on that license plate I asked you about? That I did, Mr. D. The car's a rental. It's owned by the Apex Auto Rental Service. What's the address? Six eight nine Palm Lane Drive. If you want to hold on, I'll call them and check through for you. Uh, never mind, I'll check it myself, Sam. Uh, oh, Sam. Yes? If Lieutenant Kyle calls, uh, don't mention the car. I didn't say anything about it to the police. Uh, I want to follow it through myself. You understand, Sam? I read you, Mr. D., as usual. As usual, Samuel, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> this to the police. Well, I couldn't. He was killed first. What? Yeah, the killer got away, though. But there's no question now as to who it is. No. Walsh? No. Who, then? I'm 
sitting about four feet from him. What are you saying? I'm saying it's you, Mark. You're not making sense. You can change your name. You did when you rented that car. But you can't change the way you look. The man that rented you the car described you exactly. Mark, you're not going to shoot me. You got nowhere to go from here. Is there time to do it now? Yeah, it's your story. Go ahead and write it. said she was. She deserved to die. I wasn't for you to decide, was it? I loved her. Gave her everything. Made her the star that she was, and she threw me over for that animal Walsh. You weren't satisfied just killing Dorothy? Not nearly. I had to make him pay. I thought of killing him, too. Then I decided to make him suffer. So you arranged to have him around when you pushed Dorothy out the window? Anonymous phone call had him come running. He knew she couldn't be trusted. And when it didn't work out the way you wanted it to, you called me in to see if I could stir it up and pin it on Walsh. Another minute and I would have made it. You're lucky, Richard. You didn't know what she was. I'm not so lucky I know what you are. 